As you learn more chemistry, you will encounter more and more different compounds and molecules. So how do we tell them apart? We commonly notate atoms with Lewis diagrams, which use the atom symbol in the middle, and then the only electrons we consider are the valence shell electrons. So for a group 16 atom, such as oxygen, with six valence electrons, we draw a Lewis diagram like this. We start off by drawing electrons around the central atom, until we have drawn four. At this stage, we begin to pair them up. This means an atom needs the maximum of eight valence electrons to have a full electron shell. If you look at the noble gases, group 18 on the periodic table, you can see that these elements all have full valence shells. Since they're already stable, these atoms don't react much with other atoms, as they don't want any more electrons. Alternatively, atoms can share electrons so they both have full valence shells. It is easy to understand this as a kind of Venn diagram, where one atom has some electrons, the other has some electrons, and in between them are electrons that are shared, that are counted in the valence shell of both atoms. We'll go through how this works now. Remember that electrons always come in pairs, and if there is an odd number of electrons, there will simply be a single remaining one. Chlorine has three complete pairs of electrons, and it has a single remaining electron. This is great, but chlorine never exists on its own with seven valence electrons. Chlorine, like every other element, spends its childhood dreaming of getting that full valence shell. For chlorine, getting a full valence shell means getting one more electron, and chlorine can do just that when it bonds to another chlorine atom. This second chlorine atom is identical to the first in every way. We've drawn the second atom's electrons as red dots to differentiate them from the first atom's electrons. Remember, all of these electrons are valence electrons. The second chlorine looks like this. When a Cl2 molecule gets formed, this chlorine atom and the first one will share their valence electrons, right? And remember, they both want to end up with eight valence electrons to give them that precious full outer shell. Well, it just so happens that they can get it just like this. So do you see what's happened here? Each chlorine atom has shared a single electron with its partner, and they've wound up both having a full shell. Those two electrons being shared in the middle are called a covalent bond. Covalent bonding is what allows chlorine, water, carbon dioxide, and thousands of other compounds to exist in the world. Without covalent bonding and electrons sharing, we couldn't swim, we couldn't drink, we couldn't breathe. We'd have a bit of a hard time. We can either use two dots or a line to show bonds in Lewis diagrams. That means you could also draw a molecule of Cl2 like this. Drawing Lewis structures for all those other compounds we talked about, or ones that you haven't even heard of before, is really simple. The steps work like this. Let's go through this process with everyone's favorite compound, water. It's clear, you can drink it, and it goes great with raro. A water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So let's get started. Find the total number of valence electrons. So an atom of hydrogen has only one valence electron because there's two of them. That means the hydrogens in our single water molecule are contributing two valence electrons. An atom of oxygen has six valence electrons, so this gives us a total of eight to work with. Great. Draw a first structure. So let's have a go at our first Lewis diagram. Since there is only a single atom of oxygen, that'll go in the middle, like so. Sadly, this drawing is missing the valence electrons. So let's start by adding in some bonds. We'll first stick in a single bond two electrons between the O and each H atom. With four electrons down, that leaves four more to place somewhere. But wait a minute, even with just these single bonds, both of these hydrogen atoms already have their full valence shell, and they can't take any more. This means that the two pairs of electrons we still need to dish out are going to be non-bonding pairs of electrons, and that's fine. Looking at oxygen on the periodic table, this makes sense. Group 16 means it neutrally has six valence electrons, which it does in this diagram. 
it gets its full valence shell by sharing two more electrons, which the hydrogen atoms contributed. It'll look like this. Now, let's stop and evaluate. Do all of these atoms have complete valence shells? We already know that the hydrogen atoms do, but what about oxygen? The answer is yes. This oxygen gets four of its electrons from the bonds, and four from the lone pairs of electrons. 